Alright guys, uh, today we're going to be covering um, one of my lesser collections. I, I, I really don't want it to be one of my lesser collections, but Saturn games are kind of hard to get a hold of for me. I mean, I, of course I can go on Amazon and eBay, but there's a certain appeal to finding them in the wild. And um, unless I drive up to like Columbus or down the Cincinnati... There's not a lot of like retro game stores that have a good selection of Saturn games. They're all usually sports games and that type of stuff. But I really am enjoying owning the Saturn. I, I think it's a beautifully designed system. I mean, they just don't make systems that look like this anymore, you know? I mean, I don't know if you can... I just love that the contour of the top. I mean, it looks like a, you know, a big black brick, but the... The way that the top kind of contours, it's a really sleek looking system. And, you know, I love these you know, CD, old CD doors. I really wish they'd bring these back because I love when I had CD players that were like that. But anyway, um, the Saturn, you know, it wasn't a system I picked up when it came out because I don't really think anyone really bought a Saturn when it came out, hence why it kind of failed. Plus, Sega really didn't know how to sell it over here. Um, you know, with only 3D games and, you know, no RPGs. Because, you know, the Saturn is not a strong 3D machine. It's, it's a 2D powerhouse. But um, I'm working on my Saturn collection, and I really hope to have a very nice Saturn collection one day. So let's go ahead and get this behemoth out of the road here. And we'll start into my games that I do have. And I have a disc-only version of Albert Odyssey. Um, I bought a disc-only version because it was a difference of like $35 between a disc-only version and a complete copy. And at that point in time, I was really trying to be more mm, affordable with my choices. So, you know, I got a disc-only version. I'm okay with it, although it's a working design and it kind of chaps me a little bit that I don't have the complete copy. But it was a great game. I, I loved the heck out of it. This is a blast from my past. Going to arcades. Got Daytona USA here. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. And then got Mist, which I've really been getting into the Mist series as of late. I don't. There's just something about it. It's 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 so hard to describe because if you just say you're point and clicking on things, people won't get into it. But it's really quite fun. And then Panzer Dragoon. Um, this is not the first Panzer Dragoon game I had. The first one I had was Orta. And I loved, loved, loved Orta. And I unlocked this version on Orta. And it made me want to get the original version. I haven't got Zvi yet. And I haven't got Saga. I really want to get Saga. But at the same time, that price tag is just... Oh my god. Sega Rally. Which that's really going to glare on that screen. But um, this is another really fun racer. A lot of racers on the Saturn. Virtua Fighter 2. Um, I love the Virtua Fighter series. I'm not saying I'm good at it, but I do love it. So when I got a Saturn, I wanted to get a Virtua Fighter for the Saturn. So I picked up Virtua Fighter 2. And then the last Saturn game I have here is Virtua On. And um, I, I remember playing this in the arcades. Loved it. And I finally picked up a copy, and it's a little hard to control on the Saturn controller, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? So, that is my Saturn collection, um, domestic Saturn collection. Let me, let me phrase it that way. The great thing about the Saturn is, is it's so easy to import games. So, I have a few import games here. I have uh, Far East of Eden, the, um, the Apocalypse 4. I always want to say Far East of Eden 4, the Apocalypse, but it's not the way to say it. But this is going to be an interesting game when I finally get around to it. Um, it takes place in kind of a Japanese version of America. And uh, I have to thank Johnny Millennium for getting me into the Far East of Eden series. Really looking forward to getting to that. And then next I have the Grandia Prelude and Grandia itself. I wanted to get Grandia on the Saturn because of the graphical differences. Uh, I just wanted to see it in real life because everyone goes on and on about how beautiful a game Grandio it was. And then once it got ported to the PlayStation, it was not as pretty. So I really wanted to see it in its full glory. Um, and actually, you can really notice the graphical differences when you look at the first town because the tiles actually make sense. And then finally, for the Saturn, I had to pick up copies of Lunar. 
because um, while Lunar is kind of a new series for me, it has completely just driven itself into my heart. This is old school RPG at its finest. I mean, the storyline in this between Alex and Luna, and then between Hero and uh, Lucia, it's just, I just, I love it so much. And look at this gorgeous, gorgeous box art. I mean, let me get it a little closer there. I mean, with Lucia and Hero and the snow, I mean, come on. So, but keeping in that vein, um, we're going to go to a system that I don't actually own, but I wanted to have copies of these games, and that's Lunar and Lunar Eternal Blue. Um, I pretty, yeah, I think I, pre I have every version of Lunar that was released in the Americas. The only thing I don't have are the Japanese versions of the Sega CD, which I, I don't know, I might get one point in time just to have everything. But uh, guys, I, actually, since I got you here, um, tell me something, because this cover is not embossed, and it's got a yellow, um, you know, a yellow instead of that embossed um, glossiness to it. Is this a bootleg, or did they do a reprint? Um, everything looks legit, and the booklet is obviously old. That's my makeshift cover for the disc. Um, and the disc looks legit, but I don't know about, I don't know, maybe they just did a reprint. But, um, you know, if you can leave me a comment on that, that'd be great. Because I've looked into it, and I can't really find any definitive answers. So, since this, uh, my Saturn collection is so terrible, and also my Dreamcast collection is kind of terrible, um, we're just going to put them together in one big video. Um, the Dreamcast I actually owned... Oh, gosh. That was, like, like, maybe a year after it came out. They were starting to get cheap. I bought one had it for a little while, and then I got rid of it. Because I was at that point in time, you know, I was working at a retail job, wasn't making much money, and I couldn't, I couldn't justify owning another system and trying to support it, because the PS2 was just, I mean, ridiculous buying for the PS2. But, um, again, this is a system I really wish I owned back in the day and got fully into it, because it's just a great system. And, God, it... To me, this is one of the best looking systems like ever produced. Like it just look at it. It just looks like a gaming machine. Like modern day consoles just look like a piece of electronic hardware. These look like gaming machines. The only thing bad thing about the Dreamcast was the controller. I don't like the controller. So let's get into my games. Uh, we got Blue Stinger here, which is oh I got that glare. Um, Blue Stinger. Which is a survival horror game, kind of hokey and kind of terrible, but it's kind of that bad or the the good terrible that you like to see. We got uh, ducks, which is a homebrew game. Um, these guys here, here's the website hughcast.net. Um, they're still making Dreamcast games, which blows my mind that they can still do that. But this is a, a homebrew shooter. That is just gorgeous on the Saturn, and it's so much fun to play. So, if you guys are looking for something on the Dreamcast, uh, you know, go out and look up for these um, homebrew shooters. They're really great. You got Evolution One, which is a um, oh, what's the term they use for them? Where the dungeons are randomly uh, dungeon crawler, uh, where the they're randomly generated. Um, I've played this a little bit. It didn't really capture me the first time I played it, so I'm, I took a big break from it. I'll get back to it. And I, I do plan on completing it because I do like to beat all my RPGs. We got Grandia 2. Um, I decided to get Grandia 2 on the Dreamcast instead of the PlayStation 2 because I have a ton of PlayStation 2 games and not very many Dreamcast games yet. And uh, I hear it plays better on the Dreamcast, so um, this is getting close to going and to be played because I really am craving some Grandia. Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. And we got Mach and X, which is like a first person sword game. Dreamcast had so many weird games. Fantasy Star Online, which um, I can't get my Dreamcast online because it has the um, the dial up modem on it and like the broadband modems are so expensive. But you can still get online with this, guys. If you have a Dreamcast and you have the ability to get online through your PC or something, you figured that out, uh, you can still find servers to play this on, which is really cool. Shenmue. Now, this is probably one of the gr reasons to own a Dreamcast. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, they're kind of 
torn on this game. A lot of people hate this game. Some people really love this game. I really love this game. I understand why people don't like it, but I still thought it was a fantastic experience. You know, before Grand Theft Auto went uh, 3D, you know, Shenmue was kind of that open world. You know, you can go to arcade and just waste your time playing arcade games, or you could um, buy the little capsules out of the um, gumball machines. I mean, there wasn't... You couldn't do everything in this game, but you could do a lot in this game, and it was really revolutionary when it came out. And then we got Silver, which is kind of a weird RPG on the system. It's kind of a weird action RPG. The controls are bizarre, man. Like, you have to hold down the L button while you hit a different button to swing a certain way. It's just, it's bizarre, but it's kind of fun. Then we got Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, which if you notice, Sonic Adventure 2 is not glossy because that is just a printout that I put in there because I found this in a game shop and uh, didn't have the manual, but the price was right. And at that point in time, I didn't care, but now I kind of do, so that kind of sucks. But uh, I love Sonic Adventure 1. I think it's a lot of fun. Go get it for your Dreamcast. And um, Sonic Adventure 2 is... It's good, but it's not as good as Sonic Adventure 1. And then finally for the Dreamcast, and bringing this video to a close, is Time Stalkers, which I hear is a terrible RPG, but it's an RPG on the Dreamcast, so I had to add it to my collection. Um, haven't played it yet, but I don't know. Some people say it's terrible. Some people say it's okay. I haven't really heard anybody say it's great, so we'll give it a go. But anyway, that is my uh, Saturn and Dreamcast collection. Let's see if we can get these two on screen together. Look how much bigger the Saturn is, jeez. Um, also, my little bit of Sega CD. Kind of a Sega extravaganza. But um, I was never a Sega kid when I was growing up. I was a die-hard Nintendo fan, and I'm now sort of going through my uh, quarter-life crisis and reliving um, some... Saturn memories, because uh, I had friends that had Saturns and or Saturn Sega stuff, and uh, we'd always get into arguments because I was a Nintendo kid and they were Sega kids, and um, now I'm kind of seeing what I missed out on. So, um, you know, just let me know what you guys think about the Saturn and the Dreamcast. You know, I, I know a lot of people love the Dreamcast, but the Saturn just kind of got a strong following too. So, all right, guys, I'll see you next video.